In this module, we talk about asset identification. What are assets? Why are they important to developing a system? How do they impact the RMF? Are they tangible and intangible? We'll talk about that and more in this topic, so stay tuned. This is task P10, asset identification. Stakeholder assets are identified and prioritized in task P10, asset identification. Potential inputs include mission, business functions, mission and business priorities, the system will support, business impact analysis, internal stakeholders, system stakeholder information, system information, information about other systems that will interact with the system. Expected outputs are a set of assets to be protected. Primary responsibility is the system owner. Supporting roles include the authorizing official or authorizing official's designated representative, the mission or business owner, the information owner or steward, the senior agency information security officer, the senior agency official for privacy, the system administrator. The SDLC alignment for this task for a new system that's initiation, concept or requirements definition, for an existing system, its operations and maintenance. This task aligns with the cybersecurity framework task ID dot AM or asset management, the data, personnel, devices, system, and facilities that enable the organization to achieve business purposes are identified and managed consistent with their relative importance to organizational objectives and the organizational's risk strategy. Assets are tangible and intangible items that are of value to achievement of mission or business objectives. This can include a number of things that belong to the organization, both physical assets that we call tangible items like computers, books, hard drives, and intangible items, which include things like information and reputation. Tangible assets are physical in nature and include physical and environmental elements like non-digital information structure and facilities, human elements, technical and machine elements, including hardware elements, mechanisms, and networks. In contrast, intangible assets are not physical in nature and include mission and business processes, functions, digital information and data, firmware, software, and services. An easy way to think of this is tangible items are things you can put your hand on. They're physical items. They're things you can touch and feel. Intangible items are usually things that are not physical. They include things that you can't touch, like information, or processes and procedures, or reputation. Information assets can be tangible or intangible assets and can include information needed to carry out mission or business functions, to deliver services, and for system management and operation. Controlled, unclassified information and classified information is also a form of information assets and all forms of documentation associated with the information system. Other intangible assets can include the image or reputation of an organization and the privacy interests of those individuals whom the information will be processed by the system. Stakeholder assets, the organization defines the scope of stakeholder assets to be considered for protection. So earlier we identified stakeholders, and now we'll think about those stakeholders' assets that will be protected by the controls we put in place for this information system. The assets that require protection are identified based on stakeholder concerns and the context in which the assets are used and includes the missions or business functions of the organization, other systems that interact with the system, and stakeholders whose assets are utilized by the mission or business functions or by the system. So again, like when we talked about stakeholders, they're impacted in some way by the information system. Their assets, likewise, are impacted in some way by the information system and should be protected as such. Assets can be documented in the system security and privacy plans. We want to make sure we document what the assets are 
that are impacted by the system. References for this task include special publications 800-39, 64, 160 Volume 1, and 161, and of course the NIST cybersecurity framework. In this module we discussed the task P9, its inputs, outputs, roles, responsibility, SDLC lifecycle alignment as well as cybersecurity framework alignment, tangible and intangible assets, information assets, stakeholder assets, and of course references. Hopefully this all looks familiar to you and you understand what tangible and intangible assets are, where you document them, and how they relate to system stakeholders. If you don't understand any of that, jump back in the video and watch it again. If you do, drive on to the next video. We'll see you in the next lesson.